All right, so through the process of elimination, Dalton has now figured out where the first trap's gonna go, the 2018 trapping season. His brother Dyson is with him. Where, what kind of set are we making right here? Dirt hole. He said a dirt hole trap. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know anything about trapping, but. So they're gonna teach you guys a few things as well as teach me a few things. <clears throat> so you guys can do it on your own and learn some best, learn some stuff. And then I can maybe possibly make some views once the time comes, but um, you trapping raccoons, foxes, coyotes, anything that pretty much gets in the way. Yep. All right. That's well, it. Hopefully fox, that's what we're trying, really trying to get. Nice red fox or a gray fox, I guess. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so I'll just show you a couple little tips on um, what he's doing here and get you a nice zoomed in view. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned. So this is, I am making a bed right now. For the trap to sit in, right? Yes, I'm making a trap bed. And that hammer is just pretty much just a welded piece of metal. That's right. With a little scoop at the end. <clears throat> That's right, just for exactly Round what I'm doing. Welded onto a giant giant block of metal and then a bent bent claw on the back welded to the top. Cool. Um, there is a set. Which I kinda everybody has their own style when it comes to trapping. You know? Yeah. It's kinda like it's kinda like anything else. Everybody there's what there's what works and then you know people kind of put their own spin on what works like a dirt hole set and everybody kind of has their own thing like some people they call it like a step down dirt hole set and they'll purposely make it so that it's a little bit lower than ground level so that way it creates a natural little hole for them to want to step in so oh, I see what you mean so I see exactly what, what trap is that this is a bridger number two but it's kind of, like I said, everybody kind of puts their own spin on everything. Um, so for me, I don't necessarily make a step down, but at the same time, I don't worry. I don't worry too much about making it level either. Just kind of a little hybrid set, I guess. Something I kind of do. It's just my style, I guess. You could say. This is a mid equipment right what? there. The Earth Anchor. Yeah. Yeah, these things are awesome. They're more reliable than a stake. Just a regular stake in the ground. Yeah, some people, they will stake like coyotes and foxes, but they'll double stake them. Oh uh, yeah, so, two different angles or something yeah, like so that. Yeah, one that goes this way. One yeah. This way. And it doesn't have to go in straight or whatever, just yeah. push a rod in. As long as it's in there. About a foot down. Yep, yeah, I'll just go to the end of the, the wire. To the end of the feral there, yeah. Okay. To the last feral. Perfect, man. All right, so what I'll do then is I'll take some peat moss, just a thin layer. Sifter. Just because you get big knots like that. Yeah. Um, is that, that could prevent the trap from. Exactly. So if you have any type of knot, any type of rock like that, like when the jaws come close, it could you know, close on one of those. Prohibit and even if even if it's holding, say, the animal, if it stays open this much extra, because yeah. it has a rock somewhere down there in the jaw, okay. that's gonna either let them get out completely, or okay. you know, it might hold them for a little, Yeah, you know what I mean? But they might end up pulling out, or might not even hold them for a second, who knows. I gotcha. So I'll put just like a thin layer of peat moss down first as a, like a bed, because it's still early and the temperatures are starting to get cold, but it's not quite freezing temperatures and so yet. Peat moss doesn't have as much moisture, or right. it just doesn't freeze as easily. Right. Peat, peat moss won't freeze unless it is unless it does get wet. Okay. You know, then the water or whatever it is. And it's it. also not as solid too, right? Exactly. It's nice okay. and soft. Cool. So just a thin layer for a bed form, just for the trap. Yeah. And then, now before I set this trap, now I'm going to make my dirt hole. And there's different kinds of dirt holes that people do. You can kind of do like a micro dirt hole. Like I've already caught foxes where I've taken this stake and I've driven it down in to make my dirt hole and I've left it the diameter of the stake. You know what I mean? I've made a really small dirt hole and called them. But at the same time, you can do a big, giant, flashy dirt hole set where it's like, you know, this big around, you got dirt thrown everywhere and it just really gets their attention from a long ways away. So yeah. most of the time I don't go that far, but... Now, do you... 
so essentially as a dirt hole, is that for the um, the bait and stuff to be set in? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll show you here in a sec. Now, are you, is there a specific leg you're trying to target on a specific trap? I mean, hopefully front leg. Hopefully front leg, but. Front leg. Kind of yeah. however you catch them is. It works, but this is meant to catch them by the front leg. Okay, so now in terms of distance away, mm -hmm. do you have mm -hmm. preferred for foxes or coons? Yeah, for coyotes, guys will like to do say eight or nine inches from the from the pan of the trap, and then like say like a three inch offset, either right or left. Okay. Um, for fox, it's not quite as much. Some guys like to do six or seven inches, maybe, with like a two inch offset. Okay. Um, I try not to think too much about the exact distance, just because of the chance of a possible coyote anywhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, it, whether it's a fox set or coyote set, no matter what it is, you know. You have a higher chance of catching a coyote in a fox set than you do a fox in a coyote set, but, um, you know, you just never know around these parts. So, so yeah. I try not to do anything too exact. Yeah. You know what I mean, but I yeah. just kind of know where I want to be. If I know this is about nine inches right here, I know that's my fingers. If if it's like that, so I'll probably bring it in just a little bit and somewhere right about in okay. there. Somewhere we'll do like a seven and a half to eight inches. All right. Now, do you want it pretty deep? Um, deep enough that they can't just stick their paw in there and they have to actually work it out because they will. They want they have to work around the exactly. trap. Okay. I want to make them work. So a lot of times you'll notice that I didn't hit it straight down either. Yeah. Kind of put it at an angle. It's kind of almost like a tease. It's enough that they could scoop it out. <laughs> yeah, I got you. But I make it deep enough so they can't. Yeah. Okay. So you got your bay hole. And a little pre-scoop there, so something's been digging around essentially. Exactly. All right, cool beans. What's that? What's that? What, what kind of bait are we using uh, here? Dyson. Havens, Minnesota brand. Oh, man, I, so I, I think it's Hiawatha Valley. Hiawatha Valley. I forgot I had that, man. This is a great day. <laughs> That's good stuff. That's the best stuff. All right, can I see the label there? Forgot I had Definitely. it. At least around here, you know it's. Everything works different in other places. You talk to a guy who's trapped cool, in North man. Dakota and Yeah. He might tell you bait in general is stupid. Really? Yeah. Just if you're yeah. on a natural funnel. Yeah, those guys, you know, out there they like to they snare a lot and cable strain, stuff like that. Yeah. But it all depends on where you're at in the country, you know. Yeah. Guys who are trapping coyotes down south, stuff like that, it's it's not the same. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. So rule number one. Actually, but rule number 30 here. <laughs> Take your gloves off before you touch your baits. All right, so we're going to go A lot here. of people actually have different gloves for it. I don't I don't care that much because I don't care if my hands smell like it. Yeah. That's what my buddy does. Oh, he said number one scent he's found. In my area. Pennsylvania, York, Pennsylvania. Um, if you guys want to get technical, but is Caven scent. So which one's that? What a nine Force, Tree Climber, Tree Climber, Violator 7. I don't, I don't know. What's that? Timber. 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 Okay. Now, what kind of areas, what stores sell those? Or um, um, we go to our local shop called yeah. Furnish Run Furs. It's where we get almost all of our trapping supplies. Furnish, Perfect. Furnish Run Furs. See that? Okay. Yeah. So we don't that. want that. Okay. Fox were to step on that, not hit the pan, and they yeah. feel that wobble. They come say yeah. And... It's it's really important that like you make them work this set like not very often does something just walk up to it and go yeah they're like oh a hole and stick your nose up to it walk right up to it and get... I would care if it stayed like this uh, you ever have a pinch your glove oh, I've caught my hand doing this really I've gotten a little too gutsy before <laughs> is that why your one thumb is completely backwards <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's why. That's why. Let my, me see that thumb. That's why my pointer finger points the wrong way. When I... <laughs> what I use. Man. All right, I want to see how smelly this stuff is. Let me know if you guys can smell this or not. Take a whiff. Oh, dude! It smells like chicken shit. <laughs> <laughs> It with smells, with poop. It smells dead. I don't know what, but it smells dead. goldfish. If you want some good tasting, oh, dude, it literally looks like you're taking poop out of that thing. That's okay though. That's all good. All right. 
So I'll go like that and I'll put it down the hole. We're just gonna keep that right there. Cause I don't <laughs> I don't wanna throw that too far. And then now's where I'll take the sheep wool. So they can smell that, obviously. Yeah. And you take just a little bit of this. And they'll actually come up here and look down the hole. So then you go like that. Yeah, and they come up here and they look down the hole and they say, Oh, that's a mouse. What the heck is furry down there? It smells good. Definitely does not smell good. <laughs> Let me tell you that, Doc. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. So it's just another reason for them to stay around. So you're saying you're just going to slightly scrape or... No. So I know that my pan is right there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're getting, the fox doesn't want to step on that, right? Yeah, fox won't step on that. They're really particular about their foot placement. Yeah, I don't. it's they're just. I don't know if you want to say that they're particular or they're they're that lazy, but they'll always take the path of least resistance. And if that means stepping on the fr nice fresh dirt where there happens to be a, a nice hand waiting for them, flipping hole. Yeah, that's right. I see, dude. So that's the uh, what first set of about ten we're gonna do. Or yeah. five or ten or so? Yeah, somewhere between there. We'll see. Dawn just said that was the first set of probably about ten sets we're going to do. Um, I might, might do just a couple little clips of the other ones, but um, that's pretty much the basics. That's pretty much the trap. The basic trap, what, for coons, raccoons, foxes, coyotes, and pretty much possums or skunks or whatever. Yeah. You know, anything the uh, fur bearing. That's right. Anything fur bearing that works best. Area will. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll trap her. See what we can do.